Oh, but for the cross. I've always said this in revival, but till my last breath is in this body, I will preach that the blood of Jesus is the only way for salvation. Let me tell you right now, you can run to any place, any church. You can run to anything this world has. And you won't make the devil flinch an eyelid over your life. But the second you call upon that name that is above every name and you allow the blood of Jesus to wash you and to cleanse you, I tell you, your life will never be the same again. When you know where you've come from, when you realize that you were in the gutter of sin, that you were broken, you were a mess, you didn't have your life together, in fact you had nothing together, you were just a broken mess, and yet Jesus reached down and plucked me out of the miry clay, he set my feet upon the rock. Let me tell you, when you get hungry for God, when you're saying, God, I want you to move in my life, don't ever forget where you're stood right now. Don't ever forget where you came from. Because I tell you right now, wherever he takes you to, you'll always give him all the praise that is due to his name. There will be moments in my room there's somebody listening right now to me. But there would be moments in my room where I was on the floor and I felt God's glory so strong. I just wanted the floor to open up. I couldn't get low enough. I couldn't come at His feet enough. And when His power began to fall upon my life, it wasn't about crowds. People say, is revival really how big the crowd is? No! Revival is whether His glory is among us, whether His presence and His power and the name of Jesus is lifted high. That's revival. But I'd be in the floor. And as His glory coursed through my body, You know the one thing I saw when I looked into the heart of God, when He allowed me just a glimpse, I saw His passion for the whosoever. See, my friend, all our buildings, all our carpets, all our bands, all our technology don't impress God. Our suits and our big Bibles. And all our titles, I see some preachers with more titles than the alphabet. And I think, my God, if you've got all those titles, you better be in a place with God that you're so low to the ground, you can't even be seen. I don't want a title. I don't even want an accolade. I just want to hear the heart of God that says, Son, go and win souls. Go and preach the gospel. I love it when the glory of God is here. I love it when you're on the pulpit and the Lord looks at you and he says, You see that woman over there in the black? If you call her up here, if you're just bold enough, if you call her up here, I'll heal her. If you're going to do it, you do it right now. And my friend, all God is waiting for is that we get so hungry and so desperate for Him that we're willing to step out of the boat and begin to walk in a place that we've never walked before. That God might pour out His Spirit in our generation. Oh, you can do better than that. greatest thing that angers God 
is when a man thinks he's okay. When he thinks he's satisfied. When he thinks he's got it. Preachers, I'm a young man and I respect you. But if we ever arrive in a place where we say we've got it, we've got nothing at all. Let me tell you what brings revival. Let me tell you what brings people to a place where God can use them in signs and wonders and a place where God will begin to pour out His Spirit upon them. When they arrive and say, God, I've got nothing. But what I have, I lay it at your feet. I'm nothing. You're everything. My friend, if you want to be used in signs and wonders, lose your reputation. Lose your reputation. Arrive at a place that you, no matter how many people are in that place, no matter who's looking at you, you're willing to step out of that boat because it's not about you. It is all about Him. When the power of God fell on me, most of the religious would have wanted to lock me up somewhere. I look at people and I see the power falling and I see people's faces. I don't want that. Well, my friend, that's why tonight you're dry. You're in a place of no joy. There's no fire in your life. You've got to arrive in a place where you say, God, I don't care whether you stick me to the ceiling, but Lord, set me ablaze that I may burn for you. Everyone who thirsts, oh my God, are we thirsty for God? See, my friend, there's something that we need to be right now, and that is thirsty. You see, God may have brought the church in America to a place where we get tired of all the lights, we get tired of all the performance, we get tired of all this money, 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 and we get to a place where we say, God, we just want your glory in our midst. We're thirsty for you, Lord. Nothing else will ever satisfy. Come to the waters. You have no money. Come by and eat. It's not about a preacher. It's about what God's going to do. And it's not all about Mobile either. It's what God's going to do in His kingdom in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But are you thirsty? I cried out to God for 12 months, 12 months, every moment of every day. I'd be walking down the street in Britain and people thought I'd lost my mind. I was so hungry. I was so thirsty. I was so raw, hunger for God. There was this cry inside of me. God, if you can hear me, Lord, touch me. God doesn't look down on you and say, oh dear, what am I going to do? He's a bit too hungry. 